Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to uh, Lucid's Tournament Game 7, where we are playing Helheim. It is turn 67, and I can I can hear uh, some of your screams from the last turn. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this. Um, I, I never claim to be a the best player of the game. Um, I'm experienced, uh, but I don't play nearly as much multiplayer as some other people do. Uh, and I, that shows through in a lot of different situations. I am always amazed by how much content is in this game. And I am almost, I'm always amazed that every new multiplayer game that I play, I learn new things over and over and over again in those games. I learn new tricks, uh, new strategies with units, but also I learn more about basic mechanics within the game. Things that I assume work a particular way because they either make sense in my mind or I've seen other things work in the game that are similar to that, right? Um, and then I just make the assumption. Or also just learning learning how different things interact with one another. Um, this game, for example, has taught me a lot about movement, right? Um, about how the actual movement in the game works and how you can manipulate that and what goes into adjusting things, etc, etc. Uh, and I'm always happy to learn more. It's one of the reasons why I love this game. It's because I don't feel like I have mastered it. I don't feel like I have done everything there is to do or learned everything there is to learn. Um, because I think if I had reached that point, I would be much less interested in the game. Multiplayer and learning new things is a constant wonder to, to experience more. Um, sometimes those are high points, sometimes those are low points. And this turn is a, <laughs> it's a low point. So, um... Some of you are going to have sat through that and listened and be like, what is he talking about? And others are going to be like, yep, know exactly what he's talking about. So I'm just going to cut to the chase immediately. This is going to be a little bit of a spoiler, uh, but we have a sh whole crap ton of battles. Um, but I'm going to basically spoil part of the scenarios. I'm going to stay straight out of the gate. Today, in Dominions, I learned that when you sneak into one of your own fortresses and there is a battle within that fortress your sneaking un units stay hidden and and i don't know why i assumed otherwise honestly there's nothing in the game to insinuate that that would not be the case i guess it was just in my mind it made sense it was like oh you sneak into a fortress but you're not gonna hide in the fortress while the fortress is being attacked, right? Um, and that's not me bitching about the game or anything like that. The mechanics for there, I think it would be interesting. I think it would be more interesting. I think sneak would be a more powerful mechanic. I, I guess it doesn't really need to be a more powerful mechanic. Uh, but that that being said, right? The goal of sneaking units into Helheim and into Saramacia to help in those fortress battles didn't work because sneaking them into the provinces just means they stay hidden. Um, so we lost a lot of power in some of the things that we were trying to attempt there. Uh, I now know that alternatively what I should have done, I talked about manipulating the layers of the turn order, right? Using, um, using magic phase battles using um, movement battles, which happen before uh, storming a castle, right? So break sieges and movement uh, being combined, and then using siege battles, which happen last on the battle chain. Um, so I talked about manipulating that. What I should have done for Helheim and Saramacia is I should have sallied, right? I should have used my magic phase to do the things that I was trying to do, and then instead of sneaking people in and and thinking that they were going to join the battle in the fortress, which is not how the mechanic works, uh, I should have had them use sneak and attack, which basically would have 
tried to bl break the siege, and I should have broken the siege with all of my units so that we have uh, magic phase, we do some stuff, and then we attack with all of my reinforced army to break the siege. Um, we didn't do that, so that's not what happened. So we're going to we're gonna see how everything turns out. So having said all that, uh, we're going to go through the whole turn and we're going to then discuss things. Again, we've got way too many battles to actually watch all of them. So we'll flip through the ones that don't matter and then we'll, we'll actually watch and talk about the ones that do matter. So we cast some Awakened Draugr. Uh, we cast... Uh, oh, sorry. We failed to cast Murdering Winter on Helheim due to another similar ritual interfering. Okay. Um, I'm going to... So that being said, I'm going to pop down here to Helheim real quick. Suddenly, an enormous blizzard appeared out of nowhere and struck the army located here. 98 units were hit, and of those, 20 units were killed. Among the killed was Hanga 6, the Hanga Drop, which I think is one of the Hanga, one of the ones that we were trying to magic phase with or break siege with. I think it was break siege with. Um, so, I think Calum murdering wintered me instead. <laughs> Which I didn't know that you could only murdering winter um, once a, a, a province once in a turn. Uh, so another another thing learned there. I did not know that you could only do that once. I didn't know that uh, it would cancel. So that's interesting. Uh, we did some corpse man construction alive in gargoyles. We did some cloud trapezing. Hang a six cast cloud trapeze. Uh, so it's it's interesting. We went to cast this. Right, And this is, I don't know how the turn order resolved, but we went to cast this and couldn't because it was already being cast. Hanga 6 Cloud Trapezed and then died. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's Hanga 6 was the one from Saramacia that Cloud Trapezed onto Helheim. I think that's what it is. Um, and then they Cloud Trapezed apparently after the Murdering Winter was cast, but then the Murdering Winter killed them. So that's a little weird. A little jank, but whatever. We cast a bunch more Cloud Trapezes, Teleports, um, Contract Sea Trolls, Brood of Garm, Reanimations. And then we have some uh, Assassinations. So we've got an Earth Elemental coming up against one of our Ice Devils and losing. We've got an Earth Mel Elemental coming up against a Commander and some Herdmen and winning. We've got an Earth Elemental coming up against a Vanyarl and losing. Did more reanimation, awaken Draugr. Uh, we cast uh, Bind Ice Devil and Burial answered, so we knew that would happen. We had an Ashen Angel appear and kill an Enchanter, and then we did a bunch more reanimation. So now we're at the battles. Let's flip through all of the stuff. So we got a battle in High Peaks. Okay. Um, so this is where our Vanyarls Cloud Trapezed onto the Lich. Um, so let's watch this. So there is, uh, Calum has now started to put PD, right? Which is good because previously he hadn't been putting a lot of PD or in our last altercation, he wasn't really putting a lot of PD in. Um, and we've got Nightheart, um, over here. So our plan, knowing his script is Soul Vortex, Invulnerability, and then Summon Horde of Skeletons. Having to fight through all the Horde of Skeletons probably would not have worked for us but our plan is to uh just fly and land on him before he starts horde of skeleton casting so we do flight let's see if that is super successful flight and he does invulnerability we go up in the air and we land on him. Great. So he prepares to cast Horde of Skeletons. Do we interrupt it? No, we don't interrupt it. And now we're standing in the Soul Vortex. So no bueno. Um, but if we can still pop him, then that will still be good. Attacks. Doing okay, doing okay. Alright, he's dead. Cool. Um, and killing him has routed the rest of the 
the Caleb army. So that is, and that that could have not gone our way, but that is how you deal with a lich, right? That's how you you take him out. Uh, you get one or two. Uh, maybe even three thugs that can get to him before he starts spamming or or you get a thug that can so like we could we could kit out a van Yarl, because keep in mind we went the kind of like reinvigoration route we could kit out a van Yarl to be pretty high reinvigoration and be able to deal with the horde of skeletons simply um and so we run forward kill the horde of skeletons 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 and then the lich fatigues out so we get to make a little bit of distance. He gets another horde of skeletons. We kill those. Get another horde of skeletons. We kill those. He fatigues out. And then we're probably on him or close to being on him. So that's the other the other scenario for dealing with the Lich. Is being able to not fatigue yourself out. And being able to AoE down the skeletons. So Van Jarls are actually pretty good at that as well. Um, so you could give them like a vine shield and a firebrand um and they can easily deal with the skeletons and then you can give them like a uh girdle of might uh and the fact that we have um blood lust is it called bloodlust it's not called bloodlust it's called it's called blood search yeah so uh blood search gives more reinvig um so that would be a scenario where we could do something. anyways so we win in High Peaks. Hanga 8 is uh, the victim of an assassination attempt um, and and succeeds. Uh, so this is down here in Florian, and we can see Florian has no leader now. Uh, that is a problem. So let's watch this assassination attempt because this is kind of cool. So this uh, Eagle King comes out. It's got a bottle of living water, so immediately starts with an ice elemental. Has a bunch of air gems. Has a black heart. Right, uh, which gives the assassin ability. So normally an eagle king would not be able to do this, um, and is kitted out pretty cool. So uh, we've got Hanga six over here, pluses. Um, it, these hell herdings could potentially deal with this ice elemental, uh, but we're we're pulled apart. Right, we've got air elementals on our Hanga. We've got. Uh, um, both our hell herdings are down now because we've got a bunch of elementals going on um, and our morale's broken and we're pretty much done. Which is unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Ethanim the Archdevil has managed to resist a hostile seduction attempt. We'll watch this because this is kind of cool. So Ethanim, um, so this is the Amulet of the Doppelganger, another item, uh, another legendary item. This gives seduction ability, which is pretty cool. Um, so he's just trying to kill my stuff, which is how it how it do be. Um, making a bunch of uh, air or ice elementals, which is cool. Um, Ethanim has susceptibility to cold, so this is a problem. Um, Ethanim is smacking things around, but now he's fatigued. And he didn't, this is, this is kind of unfortunate for me. Um, he didn't put up something like, uh, fire shield or anything like that. So, I don't know, I think we win this. No, we lose. Okay, Ethanim dies, alright. I was like, I, I was gonna say, I think we win this because there was, uh, there's something that where I was like, oh, I think we win this, but uh, it's because we like time out and then he runs, um, but that that's not this uh, turn. So Ethanim dies to a, a well-designed seduction attempt. So that was that was pretty good. Uh, we are attacked in Felicia and we lose. We attack in Silent Wetlands and we win. Uh, we are attacked in Zox and we lose. We are attacked in Sinafe and we win. Um, this is just a large pile of Spirehorn warriors that drops on a bunch of long dead. And again, it's, it goes back to that scenario. We, t we did it the first time. When Spirehorn warriors are unsupported, when they don't have Marble Warriors or Army of Gold or something like that, then all of a sudden... They get fucked because they land and everything is on their, their lance charge, right? They land. If they don't kill the enemy, they suddenly get shredded. So they landed, killed a bunch of uh, corpse constructs and long deads, but then there were way too many ready to hit back. 
boom, hit back, killed a bunch of them, and then they're just, they're done. Very cool. Um, and then we have our first battle in Helheim. So well, let's watch this. So this is a... Uh, this is... Berkus. Oh, oh, I also learned another thing. I learned another thing. When you do something like... I, I didn't know this. When you do something like teleport, right? You don't teleport onto the building, you teleport into the building. <laughs> so, magic phasing... You... It, I don't know I don't know how it works because I, I I'm there are certain scenarios right but I basically like my entire last turn was a massive clusterfuck and I realize that now um, which is fine it happens but yeah so like even trying to teleport onto the army instead of teleporting onto the army of Helheim I just teleported into Helheim so yeah Regardless, though, we, we've got our Break Siege, which is Hanga 9, the Hanga Drot, and Fercus, the Archdevil. Okay, so we're going to see how this works. This is up against the mass of everything that we've got. And so they, this does trigger um, everything from them. Um, so all the stuff comes out. We've got Thunderfin, we've got Serpent's Blessing, we've got all their shit. Um... <laughs> Someone life for a lifetime, I think, is what we is what we had. Uh, oh shit, my bad. Head back into Helheim. Head back into Helheim. I think it's life for a life that ends up popping him. So if we take a look at unit overview, Fergus the Arch Devil. Yeah, we get two life for a lifes, which just boom boom. Just pop the ever-loving shit out of Fergus. Which is unfortunate, because a Firestorm probably would have been nice. Um, we get assaulted by a shit ton of air elementals. Um, and we put up... Oh, did we actually get... Okay. I don't know that we got our Wind of Death off, is the thing. Cast Soul Vortex, cast Wind of Death. So most of the... Wind of Death is one of those easy to resist ones. Um, so most of the enemy army resisted it. Um, but not all. And we can see those that didn't just ticking down and eventually dying. So what did we, what did we actually accomplish? Uh, we killed 15 units. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. Oh man. That's real that's real unfortunate. Um if we watch the battle one more time, I think we can see So Life for Life was a very nice, very strong counter. I'm trying to look the Arrowfend. Okay, so he did go with Army of Gold instead of Army of Lead. Um, but uh, he did put up something. So he put up uh, Anti Magic or something like that. Um, that's important because if it weren't for that, then a lot more of these Spirehorn Warriors would have failed and would have died. Um, probably more along the lines of 50 to 60 or something like that. If he hadn't, if hadn't put up something like anti-magic, then we would have gotten way more than we did. Um, but we didn't. Cool. Very nice. Uh, we uh, are attacked in Bogotan and we lose. We get to witness, um, fucking Fomoria attacking Tirnanog. So this is one of those scenarios where, like, I, I tell, uh, I've told the rest of the game, and I think the rest of the game, the rest of the players in the game are just ready for the game to be over, I think. And that's fine. That's okay. Um, 
but I, I when this started happening when Kalem attacked I was immediately like okay look um Kalem's attacking me if everyone in the game doesn't turn and attack Kalem right now then Kalem wins if everyone in the game turns and attacks Kalem right now he probably still wins if everyone in the game turns and attacks Kalem right now there's a chance that we can whittle him down and keep him from winning and then someone else in the game wins probably not me because Kalem's going to fucking destroy me but that was basically like the the gist that i threw out there i probably just put more into that than i did into what i actually told him but whatever um but it it feels like no one no one is like everyone's just kind of like okay well game's over so omori is continuing to attack tiernanog tiernanog fairness is trying to take their lands back so they can do anything and abyssia is kind of just holding um because again i think they're ready for the game to be over as well um, so th that's unfortunate that the other players aren't immediately, like, launching in to attack Kalem, but it is what it is. So, um, Bomoria attacks Tirnanog and wins. Uh, we are attacked in Xanthrast and we, we lose. We attack in Gwyth and we win. Um, we attack in Vipitre and we win. So this is another fun one. I say fun one, but it's really just the way that, um... You know, Ice Devils work, very strong. Um, this is Bune, he does Soul Vortex. As as he does Soul Vortex, he gets attacked by a bunch of Spirehorn Warriors, but the Spirehorn Warriors all get Vine Shielded, and he immediately casts Liquid Body anyways. So with Liquid Body, um, I think the other thing that he tries to put up is uh, Body Ethereal, I think that's his script. But with Soul Vortex and Liquid Body, he's basically immune to regular shit. Like he's just gonna he's just gonna vamp everything. He's up to 124 hit points now because of Soul Vortex. So there's just not much that can be done against him at this point, unless there is magic to deal with him or something that is super high damage to cut through him. And that's just not something that's in this uh, scenario. You know, life for a life real good way to to counter that which by the way let's look that up real quick life for a life is high blood isn't it <laughs> life for a life is blood eight i don't even have blood eight then so this goes back to again right calum just had so much time and such a large infrastructure, three, three, pro three nations basically worth of infrastructure. The fact that we, and I, I do say we because I did it too. The fact that the world left Kalem to just build up and research, we deserve to lose. We absolutely did. I should have done more over the course of the 20 or so turns after we ended our war. I should have done more to convince other people to join in a war against Kalem to prevent this from happening. Way earlier. Way, way earlier. But that is, that's crazy cool. That's that's really fun to, to see a player take advantage of what they've been given. Um, so we win in Vapitre. Uh, we attack in Wise Spring Grove and win. We attack in Gifa and win. We attack in Tiny Willow and we lose because the Wraith Lord stays. We talked about this, this concept of like... Um, when you're when you're raiding and counter raiding and raiding and counter raiding you do you want to switch hit every once in a while you want to raid into a province and then instead of moving to the next province you just want to stay there because if if the person who is counter raiding you is using weaker thugs you just stay there on occasion and you eat their thug done very nice exactly what happens here uh, we are attacked in Namiradon and lose, are attacked in Ard and lose, are attacked in Shrim Clever, um, and we win because, again, we moved a bunch of uh, shitty units into a province, the province got attacked, and we talked about doing this last turn, that concept of, like, moving out and intercepting little raiding bands and seeing how they goes. Um, that's what we did there. One. Our undefended province of Lithia was conquered. That was just a mistake for me to not put um, PD in a place. Uh, we attack in Dovin and win. We attack in Cavern of Tog and win. Uh, we are attacked in Pergami and lose. We are attacked in Ungbaloth and lose. Uh, we can see... Uh, we, oh, we are attacked in Griffa and lose. This is just uh, Tirnanog taking their stuff back. Whatever. We are attacked in Robber Home and lose. 
We are attacked in Felden Forest and lose. We are attacked in Leda and lose. We attack in Obsidian Waste and win. We are attacked in Pulmania and we win because our father Ill Earth Beast Modes. Although um, we'll we'll we can see here. So this is what he is right now. He does Temper Flesh. Other ones doing Power of the Spheres. Iron does Curse. And this is a fucking thing that... This is something that I don't focus on very much. But Curse or um, the, the, the global one. Global. The Battlefield-wide one. Um, he... Oh, he doesn't curse. Okay. He, he does eventually curse me. He gets cursed there. Um, that's uh, a really good option. That is something that a good player is going to use way more frequently than a, a mediocre player like me because I'll forget to use stuff like that. Uh, but a good player will will sacrifice someone in order to make sure that a big fucking unit like Podosian gets cursed because Podosian is still probably going to wreck all of these guys. He's got 29 protection. He's, been, he's got a crap ton of regeneration. Um, but you can see... They are damaging him. They're getting a little chip damage through. And what that means is he's going to eventually get some afflictions because he's fucking cursed. Disease now. Oh, he's paralyzed too. That, that does not fucking help. And now he's got weakened. Yep. So we win, but we win after he has been diseased and weakened, which is crap. Um, okay. So that was in Almania. Okay. Uh, we are attacked in Florian and we win. Um, oh, this is, so Florian is the province where we no longer have anybody. This is actually really funny. This is an uncharacteristic mistake, I think, by Calum's player. Um, and that is, he sent out a Spirehorn Seraph after having, um, after having remote assassination and assassinationed me, both of them. And uh, my army has no leaders. My army is routing. Only he has his uh, Spirehorn Seraph on retreat. So, yeah. I lose, what is that in Florian? I lose 30 long deads and one ill earth because, you know, they start to decay because there's no one, there's no one with magic there to um, command them. But all of my herdmen stay, all my hell herding stay, my ghouls stay, right? <laughs> so he he absolutely would have won that. He just accidentally left his seraph on retreat. We attack in Royal Forest and um, win. We attack in Osins and lose. Uh, we are attacked in Long Nights. We lose. We are attacked in Orman. We lose. Um, and then we've got some. We'll, we'll go ahead and just watch this. We have a battle in Sarmatia. So. Um, we, and this is just unfortunate, right? Um, so we, we attack. I don't know what I screwed up here. Um, this is, um, I guess I sent them in to sneak. So this is Hanga 3, who's supposed to be, not breaking siege, but like um, coming over. It, yeah, it's like a break siege attack. Um, and they're doing Wind of Death. I don't know why these two Vanyarls are here. I don't know if I sent them over. Um, like, I know they're going to do... Shit, what is it called? They're going to do... Um, Mist Form and then etc. But um, the Wind of Death goes up. It hits some people. What did I cast? So she retreats. 
the blessings. I don't know why. See, this is the thing. I don't know why these guys are here. I, I just screwed up their movement or something like that. Um, but the Henga did what it was supposed to do. You wind of death and then you run, which I did find out now. Um, so, not new, more knowledge gained, right? Yes, wind of death is just, you cast wind of death and then you get the fuck out. Um, so. Whole bunch of units. They, they all die. But this wind of death, and we can see, actually, nope, they have a, they have anti-magic. This wind of death just, I think, might have gone a little better. So we attack in Saramatia, we kill 47 units, much better off this time around. Um, and, and now you can kind of see like what, uh, what Wind of Death is useful for, right? Um, if you hit a couple of different armies, uh, you can, can really whittle them down. And that, that was the plan, but this hang a drop retreating is what we should have been doing. We should have been breaking siege, retreating, and then having a fight in our, um, in our actual fortress. So uh, we attack in Yellow Mountains and we win. We are attacking Glimmering Fields, we lose. We are attacked in Blue Moss Forest and we lose. We attack in the Sink and we win. We attack in Manace and we win. We attack in Lyratos and we win um, against the Wraith Lord that shows up there. Uh, and it's basically, we'll, we'll watch this. This, this isn't anything like big but it's uh you know so we've got a wraith lord here we've got enough units to easily be able to kill the the pd that's here this wraith lord though in theory could best us the only thing is is we've got kind of too much going on um we get enough people in and then we get uh, i think basically like someone just punches him in the back of the head like, one of these Jade Maidens hit him for, like, 19 in a single turn, um, which just bodied him. Oh, that was Lyratos. Cool. Um, we attack in Laria, and we lose. We attack in Zimria, and we win. And then we've got the two final big battles. We've got Saramatia and Helheim. We'll watch Saramatia first. Um, so, Saramatia, what actually got a raid against us is this big old stack, and what we actually have against them is a comparable stack. So, but I don't remember, I don't know what we have going off comparatively. I think in Saramatia, the plan was to put up Wailing Winds and hope that we had killed enough via Wind of Death. So, I'm going to try to focus on what's going on over here. We've got uh, a mass protection that comes out. Okay. We've got some brood of Garm, by the way. Some Jotun wolves. And then we can see um, that we, we wind of death. And I think we basically do way more damage to our, our own people, in theory than we do elsewhere. <laughs> so, eh, is, it is what it is. Um, we've got a bunch of spire horns that come down. Uh, we've got a bunch of lightning strikes coming into our people. We've got disintegrates and things like that. Uh, the lightning strikes are really screwing up large patches of our peeps. Um, we've got very high defense or protection on the spire horns and the ice clouds here um, which is all but impossible for us to handle basically we oh another another thing that we don't have going on here right we don't have storm up here because again uh, we were going to do storm via Gerskogel Gerskogel's not here. Well, she is here. She's here somewhere, but she's hiding, right? So again, that that whole like sneaking people into a a province does not mean that they will be in the the fortress battle. So um, there's Gerskogel, who was supposed to be our storm, which might have made this entire battle play out differently if these guys weren't able to jump into our backline, right? Um, but 
we can kind of see what's going on at this point. Like we're just getting we're just getting attrition down. We do last for quite some time, but it's just in the long run we can't we can't do it. Okay. So let's see what we have left in Saramesha. We kill 95 of their units, mostly Spirehorn and Maria, a little bit of Iceclads. We don't kill any of their um, any of their casters, and we lose everything. If we had had um, if we had had Storm, I think that could have been a big deal. Um, but also, I think we I think we Wind of Death our own people which was uh, accidental. So we cloud trapezed a Hanga in to cast Wind of Death, thinking that when you cloud trapeze, you land on the outside, right? Which is not the case. So we cloud trapezed in and then we Wind of Death. And I think our Wind of Death did more damage to us in the long run than it did to the enemy. Um, but who's who knows, honestly, at that point? Like... He has way more going on for him. He has much better buffs um, overall. We were pretty much destined to lose that battle. I think Storm might have made it more comparable because I think if we had had Storm up, then uh, he just would not have been able to get into our back line and we would have had a better frontal defense. But I think we still would have lost. I just think it would be maybe we push him down to like, you know... 120 130 casualties instead you know that type of thing um so we should have we should have and, and we know right we should have broken siege with these individuals um and gone from there or uh, if that's if we wanted to reinforce if we didn't want to reinforce we should have just broken siege with the ones that we wanted to do it with and then not broken siege with the others Learned a lot this turn. And then we have the battle in Helheim. So, the battle in Helheim is kind of weird because of all of the different stuff. Now, we are missing like 70, and this is the important thing. We are missing 77 Hell Herodings here, um, which potentially could have made a difference. Um, we've got Magoth, who has fucking teleported in, and he's ready to cast... Uh, Firestorm. We got Hang a 10 over here who I think is casting Wailing Winds. So we're going to see what happens. All right. Natural Storm does go up before the entire army um, launches. That's good. Um, except all of these people have storm immunity. Did really they all have storm immunity? I've been talking about storm this entire time. They all have storm immunity, don't they? No, okay, not all of them have storm immunity. Just the Spirehorn warriors have storm immunity, it looks like. Yeah, because these Maria warriors don't, don't have storm immunity. The Iceclads don't have... The Arias don't... Okay, so it's just the Spirehorns. Man, Spirehorns are really strong units. They they have a lot going for them. Damn. Like, they, they're they really good. Spirehorn Warriors are really, really good. Remarkably skilled flyers and known to swoop down and attack during Raging Storms. So, so we're still able to be attacked by the Spirehorn Warriors. Um, but none of the other flyers. So we we go up with Natural Storm, we go up with Foul Vapors, and we go up with Wailing Winds. Uh, now we go up with Firestorm, which is going to kill me just as fast. And uh, again, it was never intended that we Firestorm in this battle. I thought that Magoth was going to be teleporting onto the enemy army, not into the fortress. Which, again, I don't know why I thought that. Just brain-dead moment. <coughs> we get relief from the Fairy Queen. Cool. And a bunch of Spirehorns fall on Magoth, and he dies. So the, the, uh, the Firestorm goes away almost immediately. Um, so no real loss there. 
Uh, Mist of Deception comes out, which I think is a super cool spell. We do have um, Wailing Winds up now. And our god just died. So... I think he gets... I think he got sniped. Let's just check. Because the Foul Vapors drops. So... Yeah, Cold as Ice is dead. He does Foul Vapors. Which is dope because Foul Vapors is, is going... And that could have actually done some legitimate damage against the enemy. This is stupid, by the way. Like, when when I cast Foul Vapors, do I really want to see every single damage roll for every single Foul, foul Vapors? No, I don't want to see that. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. That's crazy. This is bad information. Or at least, like, do it as a drop down. Like, let me, let me check. Right? Um... I get I got hit. I got sniped by a uh, a thunderstrike. So we just got direct hit by a thunderstrike for 25 damage, and it just insta popped him. So that's unfortunate because foul vapors might have actually done some damage over the course of this battle. Um, we just get uh, we just get thunderstrike and thunderstruck and killed. Uh, Welling winds stays up for a while, uh, but this is. This is basically just 101 on me, one, screwing up a bunch of movement stuff and, and not understanding how certain mechanics work with stealth or with um, magic phase attacking. And then also um, just getting just getting outscaled. This is like classic scenario of uh, like if I was playing, you know, like Civ or something like this. This is just someone who's like two techs ahead of me. Or, or like StarCraft, this is just someone who's like got, you know, armor three, weapons three, and I'm over here on weapons one, you know? This is, that's basically the, the scenario. It's, it's nothing that we could have done, I think, at this point would have won us the game. The game was lost 20 turns ago. Which is fine. That, it happens. Like, man. Oh man, get him, get him by Franz, get him. Fight bra Fra oh. I like how Hanga 10 is back here this entire time, just like, okay, and then dead. <laughs> All right. So we lose in Helheim. What do we do? We, we killed 53 or 59. Three of them were Arya Seraphs. One of them was a Harab Seraph. A um, couple of Spirehorn Warriors, a couple of uh, other things here or there. No big deal. Uh, we lost 133 units, uh, some really important units, some arch devils, our god. Um, yeah, really unfortunate. We should have had, we should have had a bunch of uh, hell herdings there. We should have had a bunch of van here's there. If we, if again, this is kind of like the Saramisha thing. If we had not been silly, right? If we had just attacked, if we had just sallied, then what we would have had would would have been far more comparable. We would have had closer to 230 units, I think, because uh, we had like 77-ish Hell Herdings and about 30 or so Van Heers, um, versus his 288. He still would have won. Absolutely still would have won. But it, it would have been a more drawn-out fight, and it's possible... Actually, if if our Frost Father didn't get sniped, it's possible that Foul Vapors could have done a number on him um, if we had just been allowed to survive long enough to have it happen. Um, and with the more comparable fight, right, with, um, with... I say Foul Vapors could have done a number on him. Well, we should watch this battle again and see if he put up a poison resistance. Because I bet he did. Which means Foul Vapors wouldn't have done shit. Um, well, regardless, though, 230 units, what we would have been bringing to the table then would have been a, a more even fight. We would have had more going on. Would have worked out better for us, but we still would have lost. Let's watch that real, real quick again and just see if he put up any, any poison resistance.
Yes. Looks like he put up uh, Serpent's Blessing. So, Foul Vapors wasn't going to do much of anything. Alright, uh, and those are the big fights. So, uh, ooh, we've got another big fight. We can watch Fomoria attack Tirnanog. I actually haven't watched this at all, so let's just watch it and see how it goes. Odie boy. Mm, the Odie boy. So, we've got a pretty, you know, medium-sized Fomorian army attacking a Tirnanog army. Um... Storm comes out. Firestorm comes out from... Is that Tirnanog? I think that is. Nice. So Tirnanog firestorms. With a darkness. Is Tirnanog gonna gonna beat Fomoria back here? I didn't I wasn't actually paying attention when I looked at the battle screen, so I don't know who's actually gonna win this. Oh, we've got some uh, some air elementals coming out. I'm worried about him killing himself. Oh, he's got he's got a bunch of fire resistance. That's good. Okay. Firestorm! I love the particle effect for Firestorm. It's pretty cool. I think I think Fomoria is gonna lose this because of Firestorm. Oh, uh, maybe not. It it looks like it's just too much for for. Oh no! He routed him. Yep. Holy shit! Check that. Lost 88 units. Lost 88 units. Lost most of his shit, honestly. Um, but that... that His god, casting Firestorm, just killed a shit ton of units. And that did it for him. Um, Fomoria is not taking advantage, from what I can see, is not taking advantage of his Fomorian kings or his Fomorian druids and their power more often than not. Uh, we see him do stuff like... He has these Fomorian kings back here, but he's not really doing anything with them. He puts up Storm, and he misforms them. Okay, great. And I guess the, the scenario is here, and now they're going to Thunderstrike. Blast of Unlife. Got Horde of Skeletons. But, like, instead of doing Storm, he could kit out these Fomorian kings, and he could fly them with these. They've got these big-ass Soul Vortexes up. Like, don't put up Storm until maybe later like do soul vortex do a buff or two and then put up flight and attack rear and send these big ass fomorian kings with gear into the rear rear in the gear and then maybe as like the last thing put up storm i don't know like i i, I yeah if you have 15 20 fomorian druids yeah sure go thunder strike the shit out of them but you've got like what is that? Six of them? I don't know. This takes too long. I just feel like these Fomorian kings are... are more worthwhile if you're... kind of kidding them out and throwing them into combat. Like, they're big, tanky mofos with, like, good stats. They hit like trucks, you know? And and Soul Vortex is so good for keeping you alive. Odie boy with your claws. Your claws. Mwah. Soul Vortex is so good for keeping you alive. Like, put some gear on these guys. Fly them in. Soul Vortex, fly them into the back. Fuck people up, man. I say as I'm I'm dying. I sh I'm not the one to give advice. Anyways, uh, we lose some people in Great Woods. We get some death gems in Eric's. We're under siege in a number of places. We are sieging in a number of places. We got a new famous hero. We're basically dead. Okay, so we've gotten we're 49 minutes into this turn. We're basically dead. Um, and I am kind of relieved actually. <laughs> it's like truth be told, it's. 
you get to a point in the game where everything becomes stress, right? Um, and now I'm past that point in the game. Uh, now everything in the game is not stress. Now everything in the game is just, okay, well, what, what next, you know? So what next is going to be... Uh, I am, I'm pretty sure the game is over. I'm pretty sure Kalem is going to win. Um, at this point, they are going to, they have, you know, a handful of turns before they defeat me entirely. And they will have five nations worth of territory. At that point, they will be bigger than all of the other individuals in the game combined. They will be bigger than Fomoria. They will... Fomoria, Tirnanog, and Abyssia combined. I don't think it's going to take that long, though, because I don't think um, Kalem's going to just try to world conquest us. I think I think in the next few turns, right, Kalem's going to start taking Thrones of Ascension, and then the game's going to be done pretty rapidly. So what are we going to do in the meantime? We are gonna cons we're gonna try to be a thorn in Caleb's side. Uh, we don't really have a prayer of really winning or um, doing overly much aside from annoying them. So we are going to do just that. We're gonna send some units over to ooh, wrong place. We're gonna send some units over to uh, Florian to try to take this army back, give it some leaders, etc. I'm sending two over in that direction. Um, I'm attacking into a number of different locations, into Orman with Nikafor, into Pergami with a Jarl. Um, we're raiding into a number of other locations. We still have all our Ice Devils, so that's cool, or most of our Ice Devils, so that's cool. Um, I'm going to keep raiding with them. We have Igarak still. Um, we're going to send Igarak and Pedosian at Helheim to see if we can like lock them in there. Probably not. They'll probably get killed. If they do, that's okay, actually. Nah, nah, that's fine. Um, if they do, that's okay. And then we're actually consolidating east of Helheim in Sanafe. So we've got all the units from Helheim, right? We've got 77 Hell Heritings and a bunch of Van Heers that are coming into Sanafe. We've got Hanga 4 with all of her Hell Heritings. Uh, we've got the army from Lyratos. We've got uh, a couple of units from Koenberg. We've got King 12. We've got King 14 with another army. We've got Gerskogel coming in and a bunch of Hengas coming in and our Sigadriva coming in. And then we've got a bunch of random units that are basically just on spells. Because why the fuck not? Um, and they're all coming in. So we're we're basically consolidating all of our forces outside of the forces in Robber Home, right? We're consolidating all of our forces down uh, in... Can I get there? Hell yeah, I can get there. Come come that way. Don't do window. Just do spells. Um... And yeah, that's the general goal. Is is we're just gonna we're gonna consolidate a, a an army. We're gonna try to have another big battle against Kalem, um, which we're inevitably going to lose. And then we're going to try to just raid with our demons and our Vanyarls until ultimately we die. So we're just gonna try to be as annoying to Kalem as possible. Uh, it's going to be minorly inconsequential eventually Caleb's gonna win the game and that'll be that so if you are <laughs> if you have been watching the series up to this point um and you're just in it for whether or not i win this is the last episode that you need to watch there is no way to come back from this point we have no economy we have no research, right? Our, our research is at 85 per turn. Um, and then we have no real way to change that. We have no real way to challenge Kalem at this point. If every other player in the game immediately stops fighting each other and starts only targeting Kalem, I think at this point in the game, Kalem still wins. 
and not only still wins, I think still wins handily. Um, however, send Dune somewhere else. Take him out. Um, however, why are these people just on siege? I don't want you sieging. It seems so weird. I don't want them sieging. Get out of here. Um, it's such a weird scenario to just sit on siege. Not it. Not it. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, if if your only interest is, is am I going to win the game, uh, you can stop. This is the last episode you need to watch. Um, I'm not going to win. There is no way to come back from this. Um, but if you're interested in watching this play out as I try to be as much of a thorn in the side of Caleb as I can, there are better ways. By the way, I, I should not be consolidating. If I want to be a thorn in Caleb's side, I should basically just stealth around with a fucking 90 stack of hell hurtings. Attack, stealth, attack, stealth, attack, stealth, attack, stealth. Um, until I have no more for no more land left, and then it's attack every single turn until he kills me, which will not take very long, mind you. Um, but uh, I wanna, I would rather go out in the in a big bang. So we're gonna consolidate an army and then go from there. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's fun. It it'll be an enjoyable experience to just relax and not be not have to worry about the stress of doing things right or really like trying to win but now it's just oh well let's just let's just be a thorn in Caleb's side as much as we can and go from there uh thanks for watching it's been a fun series if this is your last episode uh i'll see you on the next one if you're gonna stick with it until the end then i'll see you on the next turn bye everybody